All right, with the coronavirus running rampant across the world and it being a little rainy since it's April, maybe it's time to get back into the whoop scene. And let's take a look at this Newbie Drone Acrobee B-Brain Brushless Bind and Fly Whoop. This is Newbie Drone's first brushless whoop. So let's check it out and see how they did. Okay, so on the bench you can see this is a 1S whoop style brushless quadcopter. Uh, some unique things about this, I've noticed in the construction that it is it has a separate receiver here. So you would have whatever receiver type you need in there and it gets wired up directly to the board. The flight control board has the VTX built in so you can see in here this is just the camera and then the VTX wire comes in and that's right here plugged into the board. So this is the flight control board, it is the ESCs and also the VTX all built in the one and obviously Newbie Drone sells those separately if you would need a replacement for any reason. I've flown this quite a bit, beat the heck out of it and you can see everything's fine yet so I would not imagine you would need one but uh, they are available. The wires on here are pretty stiff as well and that is kinda nice because a lot of times they're silicone wires and I I don't know that these are silicone wires, but just the thickness of the material looks like they're not stranded, they're just solid. It's nice because they're not kind of flopping around. You can see they're pretty sturdy there. If I can, you know, pick up the quad by it, you don't really see them moving around when I'm pushing on these. Uh, so that's something different than I've seen. Of course, the motors are just plug and play, so they can, if you need a new motor, you can just plug a new one right back in. I have had a couple times where, you know, in a hard crash these come a little loose so you just kind of push them back in. Uh, if you notice anything, it's not a burnt motor or anything of that nature, it might just be the connector coming off. And if you're a racer and you're concerned about that, obviously it's a dab of hot glue on here and here and these things would take care of that. Other than that, the, notice, the big thing I've noticed with this is it is ultra low profile. Taking some of these Newbie Drone uh, Nectar Nitro um, batteries, which are great. These are the 300 milliamp hour 4.3 high volt batteries. These are really good performers, so I would definitely recommend picking these up for this or just any 1S. And, you know, this snugly fits into here and it's not going to come out and you have to push it all the way in. It is a little strange on here that this uh, the cord could have here could have been a little bit longer I feel. I mean it works it just plugs direct in like that but you can see it's it's tight and uh, so that, that's how it works there. Maybe it could have been another half a centimeter longer or something of that nature. But uh, the low profile part of this when you look at that and the low center of mass being down below is kind of unique to this and it really makes a difference in flying I feel you know for if you're catching carpet and things of that nature that low center of mass tends to keep you upright versus it flipping over a lot and having to use turtle mode obviously this works for turtle mode uh, if you do need it it works great the plastic on here is you know pretty flexible and I've crashed this quite a bit I mean I probably have 50 to 100 flights on this thing racing around with my buddy here I'll put some footage up on the screen here we can see that rolling of us racing around with this so and just with that and other flights you know I've crashed this a lot raced it pretty hard uh, down here in the basement just for fun and uh, yeah she's held up pretty pretty good one thing to note that these receiver antennas in here for the RX they're not they, you don't get great reception you know it's just even flying around the basement this you know I'll get RSISI warnings if I'm Kind of in the storage room here and, and out farther in the basement so these could probably get fished up through here or something to be a little bit more exposed and maybe get a little better rssi reception honestly it's fine for me i think if you're you know maybe in a larger warehouse or something at nature with a lot of stock shelves in between you might have an issue but uh you know if you're just flying at your house or uh you know in, a, in an open area i'm sure it will be fine it's when you're going through a bunch of walls and they're I think it's mostly just because they're tucked down in here and obviously they're not straight, uh, things of that nature. So, And that's just the receiver it comes with. Obviously, if you put another receiver in it, like an FR Sky receiver that you might have, then obviously you get the range that is associated with that. Okay, so let's go look at the part specs on this back on the computer. 
For the specs on this thing, you can see it has built-in LEDs, VTX, OSD, obviously 2S capable, but I'm running 1S on it all the time. Honestly, that's the first time I'm seeing the 2S. Man, this would be a rocket on 2S with the 18,000 kV motors. You just need to be careful what you're not over-motoring it and burning anything out. Yeah, I'm, this is awesome on 1S. I don't even... 2S, I don't know how you'd get it all connected. You'd have to have a kind of a TPU thing down here on the bottom to get another battery mounted, I guess. Has an F4 processor flight controller. You can see the weight there. Turtle mode capable, of course. BL Heli 32. And we'll talk about this here in a second because it comes with two flavors that you can get the hex files, but they're special hex files that you need to flash it up to 48 kilohertz, which does give you extended battery life. And I'll show you that here in a second. PH2 connectors, uh, voltage sensors, all the things you would expect. No black box on this like as normal with any whoop class. Uh, but you have the VTX down here with a 25 milliwatts and 100 milliwatt uh, with an off option as well. I will drop this link below, but on their Facebook group, the Newbie Drone Hive, there's a post here where you can download the 48 kilohertz and then you can get those in two flavor. It's either a 10 nanosecond dead zone or a 5 nanosecond dead zone. So the stock software that comes on this for the ESCs is 24 kilohertz. BL Heli S, and it's the 10 microsecond dead zone version of it. It's this one right here. You can see flash for production. I definitely recommend getting the 48 kilohertz, and I would just go with the 10 kilohertz dead zone, and I'll put some flight footage up here, and you can see that rolling through with the flight times I got with 48 kilohertz, just like we've talked about before in another video where I've tested that. You get about a 30 second flight time increase, maybe 40 seconds, things of that nature. So it definitely helps a little bit. Generally on average with 1S on this, you're getting about a three minute flight time on 24 kilohertz. On 48 kilohertz, you're getting like three minutes, 45 seconds, things of that nature, three minutes, 40 seconds, somewhere in that round. Obviously it depends how hard you're flying it. Uh, both of those numbers would vary. I did do testing as well with the five microsecond dead zone as well. And that showed to be about the same flight times. I'll throw that up here as well. It showed a bit, a little bit less, but that could have just been the variation of the flight. So I'm going to call those as even without doing any additional testing. It would make sense that the 10 microsecond would have a little bit longer battery life. And it did show to be that. So maybe it does, or maybe it's just the same. Um, but really there's not a lot of difference between the two. I think it came up to be, you know, six or seven seconds, things of that nature. It's not a lot of time differential. So taking a look at the settings that they have in Betaflight, it is custom settings. You can see the ports here, it's all set up. So you have your VTX and Smart Audio. Notice the Smart Audio is running over MSP, so that's unique. That's with that built-in VTX into the flight controller, so it's a little bit different there if you do have to reset this up. In the Configurator tab, you can see the settings here. I didn't touch any of this stuff and it was in great shape. So I would just recommend leaving the defaults that they have. They basically have set up what you need. They don't have the RPM filter turned on, but the 48 kilohertz versions of the ESC software does support RPM filtering. So you could use that if you'd prefer. And obviously you'd make the adjustments to put this gyro down to 4K. So it'd be 4K, 4K, D-Shot 300, and then you could tick on the RPM filtering. And then of course have 12 here for your poles. But honestly, I didn't mess with any of it, and it flies great. So I just, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. They have the scaling set up here for the amp draw and everything, so that's all custom and set up for you. The PIDs are custom PIDs. These are not Betaflight stocks, and you can see some different settings here as well, so some attention to detail, and you do have a custom tune for the craft, which I don't see a lot. A lot of times for these things, even I see it a lot of times people say it's a custom tune for the craft, but I, when I look at it, I'm just like, well, that's just beta flight defaults. It's really easy to see now too with the sliders because if the sliders are active and they're all in the center, then that's beta flight defaults. Some filter settings here, which I was surprised by, they actually moved the sliders down a little bit, but again, it flies great. I don't get any wash. I'm usually running around in angle mode, so I'm, it's not like we're doing S turns, but even when you do sharp, you know, uh, reversals with it. I still don't see any prog wash. So again, it's not broke. I'm not going to fix it. Receivers tabs, pretty basic here. One thing you may want to bump up here is putting in some dead band. So maybe five and five. I'm actually going to do that right now. Hit save on that. 
And then again, of course, setting up the modes tab to your liking for angle mode, flip over for the crash. I believe this is how it was set up stock, but I could be wrong on that. I can't remember if I changed that or not. Last but not least, it's OSD. I know I made some tweaks into here, but you can see the standard stuff. I think most of this stuff was on the screen. Um, so it's all kind of set up for you. It's really plug and play, you know, get your receiver bound up to your transmitter, get on the right channel, maybe flash it up to 48 kilohertz, and you should be ready to go. What's kind of unique with these when the ESCs are built into the flight control board, you can see I don't have any battery connected here. It's just the plugged into the USB. When you're doing the flash up to the BL Heli 48 kilohertz software, you would download the BL Heli suite, which was linked in that post, which that post is linked below. And you just, you know, connect to your COM port here, hit connect. You're going to hit read setup. Again, you don't have to have a battery plugged in and worry about all that. It will read all the ESCs. You can see I do have it on the 05 here. I'm actually going to flash this over to the back to the 10. I was just doing some testing to see on battery life. So after it reads the ESC setup, you go to flash BL Heli. From here, you're not going to be able to pick anything on this list. It's the ESC firmware specific to the Acrobee, so they are publishing it themselves. So we're going to have to download it from that link. Again, the link is below. And then you're going to hit this ignore list and pick from file. You can of course browse out to wherever you have that downloaded here. And you can see this is what's on its stock. I'm going to actually flash the 10 microsecond uh, 48 kilohertz. I was on this 5 right here. And I'm going to flash this one though. I'm going to click that. I'm going to hit yes, continue anyways, and then yes again. And that will flash up to the first ESC. It's a pretty confusing process because it confirms that it's flashed up to ESC number one. And then the dialog comes back up again. As you can see here, and it's looking for ESC number two and says, hey, do you want to flash that? This is just how BL Heli Suite works. I wish it would just do them all, but it doesn't. So you have to pick it each time for each ESC. So now we're going to go ahead and pick ESC number two. Yes again. And then do ESC number three, and you get the gist. After you're all done, you can see it's displayed up there, and you just hit OK. And from there, you just hit Disconnect. It is noteworthy that the settings here are, again, custom from Newbie Drone, so they have DMAG high compensation. These, these indicate that these are not the defaults for BL Heli, so that's actually customized. And that flows through, so as you're flashing new firmware, it's BL Heli keeps the old settings and flashes the new firmware and then writes the, you know, the previous settings to it, so it's not like you're starting from defaults all the time. And that's some of the stuff that you're getting with a Newbie Drone product. There's you know, that extra attention to detail, so it's really just a bind and fly. You can get it, bind it, fly it, and it, you're going to have a great experience right off the bat. The big question on this is the pricing to me. You know, this is $150 where you could get a Mobula 6, which is a 1S Whoop, for probably $80 or $90. Why would you spend the extra money on this? And it's really just the quality. Uh, one of the aspects of it is the low profileness of this, where your Mobula 6 is kind of a high profile whoop, so it's going to have a tendency to flip over more uh, in a crash, things of that nature. I've noticed with this, you know, you can obviously skate through areas and just it's having that low center of mass helps keep it upright a lot better. Obviously, the other aspect, it's, you know, from Newbie Drone, which has all the stock parts here. It's a company based in the United States, so you're getting that. Uh, you know, they've been around, they're in the whoop scene, uh, quality is a part of this, so you're going to get a good quality project. I can personally vouch for this. I mean, I've, again, I've really beaten this thing up and crashed it really, really hard a bunch of times, and it's totally fine. There's, it's like it's brand new. There's nothing wrong with it. You can feel it in the motors. Uh, they have pretty strong magnets on here, so it's something I can't necessarily relay to you, but... You know, you're, you're getting a quality product here, I really feel. I mean, this canopy is tough. You have this uh, camera in here. You can see on the DVR footage as well that you have a good quality camera on there that uh, it's going to give you an enjoyable flying experience. Okay, so that is it for the Newbie Drone Acrobee B-Brain Brushless Bind and Fly FPV Drone. Take Check it out. Uh, links down below for this. And also do check out these nectar batteries i found these to be really good for anything i usually use these on my mobile 7 a lot now so if you're in the market for some batteries do check give these a shot see what you think of them and maybe then get some more or whatnot thanks everybody and i hope this helped
Podcast.